Reynolds averaging is an excellent way of modeling turbulence. As I think David has just said, turbulence has an underlying mean flow to it. What does the mean flow mean? Time average. Right, so, so turbulent flows are Turbulence flows that are amenable to Reynolds averaging has a property called ergodicity. So ergodicity means that the time average or infinite time average is well defined. It is insensitive in some sense to what initial condition you put in. Right, so that makes the time average a well defined quantity. If the time average actually depends exactly on what initial condition you put in, it's like a, a ball sitting on the on the a per perfectly flat table. If you initialize here, the time average is going to be here. If you initialize, if you put the ball here, the time average is going to be here. Then there is no well-defined time average to even solve for, right? So, so the uh, Reynolds averaging uh, assumes that if you take a big velo a big U defined as this bracket or some people use u bar right to denote the averaging it is the limit of the averaging length goes to infinity of the average over a length of t so ergodicity is an assumption that assumes two things one is that this long time average as you take t goes to infinity does not depend on what initial condition this u has right this u is a velocity field that depends on time it's a function of space and time but we are averaging only in time so the resulting big u is only a function of space and not time how do you spell ego egodicity right it means when the solution field evolves in time, it experiences all the possible states it could experience, right? Rather than, for example, a non-egotic trajectory would be like this. If you start the trajectory here, you would be going in this region. If you start the trajectory here, you would be going in this region, they never mix together. And an egotic, uh, egotic dynamics would be like, if you start from anywhere, it'll experience all the states it could experience. If you start from here, it'll do the same. It'll ultimately, as time goes to infinity, it will also experience all the states it could experience. So it doesn't really matter where you start. And for fluid dynamics, the space is the phase space, is the collection of all possible snapshots of a velocity field. It is a tremendously high dimensional space because the number of dimensions, if you think of a discrete simulation, that would be three, which is the dimension of space times the number of grid points you have in your simulation. So the dimension of the phase space is huge. Egodicity assumes, assumes that in this huge phase space, wherever you start the simulation, you will experience, you will go through the entire phase space. And there are points, there are portions of the phase space that is never accessible, but uh, you will access all the portions of the phase space that is, is accessible, okay, by the Navier-Stokes equation for that particular domain and boundary condition. So, Egodicity assumes that the time average is independent of in initial condition. It also assumes that, I mean, uh, under, under this con condition, you can actually prove under some other mathematical conditions that this infinite time average is equal to an ensemble average. So what does ensemble average mean? Ensemble average means if you start from a collection of initial conditions, okay, as long as the collection of, an uh, infinite collection of initial conditions, 
as long as the infinite collection of initial conditions has a probability distribution that is non-singular. A singular distribution would be, for example, if you concentrate all the samples from the same initial condition, that would be a singular distribution. A non-singular distribution means you spread out the initial conditions in the phase space. Then if you evolve them for long enough time, the collection of fluid dynamics uh, samples would evolve into a well-defined, a uniquely well-defined ensemble. And if you average over that uniquely defined ensemble, you will get the same as the long time average. Okay, so, so when people talk about time average and ensemble average under the egoicity assumption, it's equivalent. All right. And of course, computationally, it is much, much easier to evaluate which one. Ensemble average. If you computationally evaluate ensemble average, you will need to start from many, many different initial conditions and evolve and, and perform a simulation for each of these initial conditions, right? And depending on um, how accurate you want the ensemble, you would need an increasing number of initial conditions, maybe 100, maybe 1,000, maybe 10,000. That's actually pretty expensive. Computationally, if you perform a direct numerical simulation or larger simulation, it's actually a lot easier to compute a time average, or at least a mix of time average and ensemble average. Right. So if you just perform a time average, you need only a single simulation, but you need to simulate for pretty long. If you decide my average solution is not accurate enough, what do you do? You make T bigger, right? Run it for longer. Run it for longer, exactly. Or if you mix the time averaging and ensemble averaging, you would be running like 10 simulations. If you want it to be more accurate, maybe you add 10 more simulations, or you can simulate the existing 10 simulations for twice as long, right? So, so this is uh, uh, usually the definition of what it means by Reynolds averaging.